1982, there was an attempted coup in Kenya. I remember my father leaving the house when we could hear gunshots and going to work and trying to track down his reporters and other people to produce this newspaper. And the only newspaper that came out the day after with the breaking news was the Nairobi Times. This really struck us as this commitment to getting the news out no matter what. My name is Betty Nang Weno. I'm an associate professor at the University of California, Davis, in African American and African Studies. And Hilary Nguyeno is my father. Hilary Nguyeno was a journalist, publisher, social commentator, and a public figure in Kenya for about 50 years. And he started a number of magazines, newspapers, and television programs. In 2014, faculty members of Moore University in Kenya set up the Hilary Nweno Center for East African Media Research. It is indeed a great honor to me and my family that an institution of such high academic standing as Moore University has chosen to recognize my journalistic and publishing endeavors through such a center. We were very thrilled to be able to have an archive there, but quite worried about its maintenance and access for students to be able to use it. Physical archives can have problems for multiple reasons. The actual fragility of the material itself, but often the fragility of some universities who might lack space or money in order to maintain collections in the way that they would like to. It's very important to us that there was a digital copy of these records. As luck would have it, uh, I met with uh, Coherent Digital. The Hilary Nguyeno Archive is a digital collection of magazines, newspapers, and films published and edited by my father, Hilary Nguyeno. Digital Divide Data is a social enterprise that works with disadvantaged youth and supports their education while they work in digital outsourcing. One of the things that were always important to us as a family and to my father very much was that uh, other people would have access to the materials that he produced, in particular people in Kenya and in Africa. And so this digitized version is accessible for free for African universities and to historically black colleges or HBCUs in the United States. These newspapers and magazines came at a time that really is hard to imagine today. News was expensive and scarce. Very little of it came from Africa, and very little of it looked at the world from an African's perspective. But we feel this project is very important to scholars and to young journalists. It is my sincere hope that in the not too distant future, this center will be the place which academics and media practitioners both in Kenya and abroad, turn to in order to understand what impact the media has had and can have in our country and the African continent as a whole. It is unfortunate that I'm not here in person to talk to you, but my spirit is with you.